Hey there, I'm uh, John Appleby from Bluefin Solutions, um, SAP mentor and blogger with JDOD.com. Um, I've got with me today um, Steve Lucas from SAP and Adam Binney from SAP. Do you want to introduce yourself? Sure. I'm the head of our business analytics organization globally as well as Hanna. I work with Adam. And I'm head of the business intelligence uh, solutions group. Yeah, and we're here to talk about uh, mobile today. No, just, just kidding. No, um, we're here to talk a little bit about SAP's analytics strategy and get the kind of 30,000 foot view on uh, what's happened in the last year and uh, what's coming up soon, what's in the roadmap, what goodies you've got in store for, uh, for uh, the SAP customers and where you're investing all your customers' money back into R&D. Absolutely. Um, maybe we can start briefly with just a little whistle stop of where we're at with analytics today and, and, and what that means to customers. Okay. Well, I, maybe I'll provide just a few seconds and then we'll let the primary owner of, of our business intelligence product talk about it. That way I can get my comments out of the way early. You know, I think obviously we're, we're live, uh, generally available with BI 4.0. That's a big deal for us. I think, you know, we kind of prematurely announced it in February and then made it available in uh, September. But we did ship when we finally communicated a date. We, we did deliver that. And now that it's, it's out in the wild, I think we're getting some good, real customer deployments, real feedback. Mm -hmm. You know, part of it has been, prior to the release of 4.0, we talked a lot about, uh, you know, version 4.1, which I know is one of the, the issues and I think created a little confusion. But in the spirit of aligning to some of our other products, like HANA, for example, we moved to a HANA 1.0 with service packs or feature packs as part of that. And really with BI, we're kind of doing the same thing. It's basically aligning to it where it's more of a BI4 plus service packs or feature packs in this case. And uh, you know that, that's where we are today. I think one other assessment I'll make, you know, BI4 really introduced what I'd call more of a, a common look, feel, and theme across the different design tools in BI, one of the many big features. And I, I truly believe that going forward, there's three or four really big enhancement areas that we have to focus on. One is mobility, no doubt. Two is continued consistent user experience. We can't let that get out of control. Um, I think the third one is making the deployability of all of our BI solutions, whether it's BI 4.0 or anything else we uh, release, more agile, more deployable, more manageable. So, you know, those are the big three. And then, the, you know, kind of the fourth one is continuing to leverage, I think, the, the HANA momentum that we have and really integrating BI with the intersection of in-memory. Those are some big thoughts from my end. Yeah, and, and let's just deal quickly with this whole specific thing around 4.1, because yes. I was talking to one of the customers last night and their, their message was really clear. We're not going BI4 right now uh, because we're concerned about maturity and we're waiting for 4.1 or feature, feature pack three as it's now, now called. I guess it's probably one for you, Adam, but what, what would you say to those customers? Um, 4.0 is the new platform, if you like, that we have put an enormous amount of core innovation into to make it a, a fundamental home for our customers to operate their core BI infrastructures on in the future. So that's really where we want customers to go to. Um, I think that the, the reason that we, we uh, renamed 4.1 FP3, Feature Pack 3, and we've been focusing around ensuring that we can deliver as much of the enhancements and capabilities in those releases to the 4.0 is to really make customers feel secure that if they move to 4.0 um, they're going to have that longevity they're going to have the all the enhancements they're going to be able to continue to leverage all their core capabilities without facing uh, another release that they then have to cope with and deal with so that was kind of the real drive there is to give people that that surety and that confidence I think 4.0, you know, as we go forward, as we look at it, we really want to create that fundamentally safe, reliable, consistent, uh, clean environment for people to deploy into their, uh, into their infrastructure. And then we'll be providing on top of that innovations that sort of work around uh, that core and work on top of that core to really give people new value. So you can think about things that Steve's already talked about, our support for HANA and the ability to leverage in memory. Um, really allowing us to bring the new experiences that are part of that 4.0 infrastructure now, uh, like Explorer, uh, like analysis for OLAP, like analysis office, to really bear on that very fast data that we can deliver now for both uh, agnostic usage in HANA on any data, but also, of course, BW on HANA uh, for our core uh, SAP BW custom base. And then there'll be other innovation areas that we're doing you know, around that. We're bringing uh, new tooling around predictive, we're bringing uh, new predictive capabilities inside the HANA environment as well as the IQ environments. 
So all the way around that core of 4.0, you'll see us continuing to innovate and bringing new capability, but we want customers to feel secure and safe that operating their core reporting environments, operating their core business intelligence environments on 4.0 is the right choice and the right place for them to go. Yeah, but uh, and just coming back to that maturity point for a moment, the, the, I guess the question is to those customers that are, and there's a, especially customers that are upgrading, there's all, tons of them on five and six and two and three, and they're all thinking, when do I upgrade and when do I get this value? Is that now with 4.0 or, or really should those people with very mature deployments be waiting? Uh, can I just real quick? I mean, my answer is now. <laughs> for, for months, I mean, it, I have to. I have to just state this because I, I wouldn't say December twenty fifth would be the good date to do it. Yeah. But um, I think that um, I think most of our customers do take a, a very mature approach to upgrades, and they should obviously plan them out and make sure that they organize them effectively. But there is no reason for that planning to to build in another delay. I mean, I think they should be planning right now to move when it's appropriate for them. I think most of our customers would move in. Early parts of Q1, they would start to, to do those processes. Um, I think that as you as you see what we're doing again, as we bring bring out FP3, it will be a uh, an upgrade installer that you can just upgrade an existing system without having to do a clean install or anything like that, which would be a, a more occurring when we do the sort of point releases. So we're really focused on making that as painless uh, as uh, as possible for customers. So I would say that any customer who has a large deployment should be in their planning cycles, they should be thinking about when they can leverage all of that value and all of that, uh, the new capabilities and enhancements that we've delivered, and they should be pretty much moving as fast as they can towards that environment right now. Yeah, and I, and I guess uh, uh, alluding to kind of my opinion on it, which, which seems to be from the customers that have moved to 4.0, they love it, it's great, and now it's stable. I think, um, obviously, products, they first come out, and then they become mature. The question is when that mature cycle, mature cycle happens. And for me, I think it happened kind of September, October of this year. But that was when I felt it from the customers and they were stop, stop asking for fixes quite so much. And yeah. that's, for me, that, that, that happened like three months ago. So I think the, the now thing would be my answer as well. Well, I mean, so uber clarity on a couple things because there was a lot of good Twitter dialogue and tweeting going on with this. Right. Number one, it's not 4.1, it's 4.0. Yeah. Number two, it's called Feature Pack 3. That's coming in Q1. You can install 4.0 now, as, as Adam said. You can move to Feature Pack 3, which just gives you more features in Q1 without doing a full system reinstall. It's a next, next, next kind of upgrade, which is, I think, very, very powerful. And from our standpoint, this is the biggest beta in the history of our product over the last year. There's never been a bigger one. And yeah, we had our ups and downs as any beta does with any product, but I consider it to be rock solid, a stable product, and uh, we're through that period of, well, you know, gosh, is it ready to deploy? Okay, so, so let's then look at Feature Back 3. I mean, we know it's got a ton of stuff in it, but we've got to pick out the three things that actually you think are going to excite customers. What, what do we think those three kind of headlines are? So there's a, there's, there is a ton of stuff coming. I mean, obviously, in Feature Back 3, there's enhancements that really as with four, already completely cover the, the spectrum of capabilities. But I think um, there, there are a couple of uh, ones that are most sort of pressing people. I think the, the big one, I think, is that we've added an expanded Explorer to have something we call View. So we have the ability now, when you're using Explorer, you can say, this is something I use every day. Um, I can remember that and collect them together and put very simple controls, certainly not as rich as you might be able to do with a full Excelsius dashboard, but simple controls allow you to create multiple views that are connected together. Um, yeah, so that's, I love that product. I think that's, for me, for a, a, a C-level person or, or somebody who doesn't interact with computers, the ability to have something that gives you information the way you wanted it presented in a visually interesting way, I think that's, that's a, one of the killer apps. Right on your iPad. Yeah, right on your iPad. So, yeah. so that was going to be my second point, would be that that is all available also on your <laughs> iPad. Oh, that's just one. Come on. <laughs> but um, I mean, I think, in fact, what's interesting is we're now very focused on delivering these experiences first on things like iPads. So th there is a web experience, but we actually expect most of the, the core users to actually more likely use it on an iPad than actually use it on a, on a laptop or a browser-based experience. And I think that what you'll see in, you know, again, it's available today. You can actually play around with the iPad version of Explorer with exploration views using the SAP experience connecting to our sports data. Um, but that will be available uh, with FP3, uh, for Featureback 3, with, uh, with of course, any, any core BI deployment. We're also enhancing our mobile story in general. We're bringing out 
um, you know, updates and improvements to the mobile BI solutions that will deliver more of our content out to the uh, package delivery onto the end offline use on the on the mobile device. So that's probably the second big part of what will be coming in Feature Pack 3. And again, taking that core value, that stability of 4.0, and then broadening out who can get and realize the value from that system. Um, the third area is, I mean, I think that is there a, is there a third really big uh, uh, capability? It's, uh, you know, this is where I would probably go. There's probably now 300 uh, other things that are coming in Feature Pack 3. Um, there are a lot more uh, of our core uh, standards requirements and stuff being supported. Uh, we have enhancements for uh, for every single one of the core experiences. There's a big upgrade coming um, around uh, analysis for Office uh, and so on. So I think that there's a more of a broad broad base. But I think that the really big one is the mobility um, and of course this enhanced exploration capability. And then very quickly after that, you're going to see not as part of not sort of linked into F, in, into Feature Pack Three, but sort of right alongside it, we have a new predictive tool that's going to be coming to Tech Preview, um, and then we're going to have other tools mm -hmm. coming on. That, that take these core experiences and leverage them out to these specialized audiences that we know exist um, that are looking for a specialized tooling um, that we can extend from that Feature Pack 3 platform and environment. Got it. So we're going to have to wrap in just, just a moment, but um, let's just look forward in, in, in a year's time or, or so. What's, what's the next big thing in analytics in, in, in 30 seconds? What's SAP not doing that it's going to do? What's, what's the big thing? I think, I think um, we, we often talk about sort of the, the key areas. Obviously, we, you know, we want to make sure that we continue to deliver core business intelligence infrastructure for our, for our customers. I think the areas where, where we think about um, you know, driving future, one is mobility. We think there's a, a ton of opportunity in mobility. Today, again, a lot of what's happening in mobile is around the same users that use BI today. Same people just moving on to technology like iPad. But we also know there's a huge untapped audiences of people who would leverage in, um, analytical information if they was delivered to them in a way that was more appropriate to that kind of function, particularly operational workforces. And we're looking now to create a studio that will allow build, people to build you know, specialized analytical solutions on mobile devices, and not necessarily leveraging big complex backends, but just being able to deliver that very fast analytical capability targeted to that particular operational worker. Any um, final words, Steve? Um, yeah, well, I just I, mean, I think Adam's right. So there, to me, there's two big things. One is mobility, and the other is, you know, when we think about the market in general, we think about, you know, kind of Excel as everyone uses that for some level of BI. And we think about powerful tools like Business Objects Enterprise, a little bit higher up the spectrum. And I think that in addition to applying mobility over the top of those, you'll start to see us put tools in kind of the gaps in market. So you'll probably see some additional agile BI capability, words you've heard like Hilo in the past, that, that will, will come to fruition. So I'd say agile BI, mobile BI, um, and custom BI types of applications for mobility so, uh, types of experiences, all of that in a nutshell really coming in 2012. Yeah, my, my, final, word, my final word would be orchestration in the end. Uh, that's, that's, for me, that's where it's going. We'll take that on top and then we orchestrate our business on top of that. And that's, that's where it gets interesting. Anyhow, thanks so much. We're going to wrap. Thanks, Dennis.